uh, we ask you we ask you to mute yourself if you're not speaking. Um, it uh, helps keep background noise down while the while the conversation and the presentation is going on. Um, we don't use meetups chat um, for uh, these meetups because um, the chat goes away as soon as uh, so if somebody posts a link, you can't go back and see it. Um, uh, so we use the the meetup channel in Drupal NYC Slack, um, uh, and uh, you're also welcome to post something there to introduce yourself. Um, and um, we have uh, we always have one talk uh, at the lunch and learn. Um, uh, today's talk uh, is uh, pros and cons of migrating your sites to AWS. Um, uh, it's titled part one of three. Um, Slim can say more, but my understanding is parts two and three are being offered at other meetups or camps, other places. Um, so you have to sort of follow them around the world um, in order to get uh, um, parts two and three. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll uh, stop presenting my screen and uh, pass it over to Celine. Okay, thank you, everyone. Can you guys hear me okay? All right, so let me put my thing in presentation mode here and I will share my screen. Uh, and I, I actually like to keep things interactive and this presentation is made to be interactive. It's a small group. Uh, I, I don't like formal things uh, once you get to know me. So uh, so you will see this and I, uh, I will welcome, there are slides throughout this thing. This is a lunch and learn. So there are slides throughout this thing that I want input from you guys because every opportunity for me to present is every opportunity for me to learn. So, uh, so people here, everybody here is, is I, I consider them, uh, you know, smarter than me. So, uh, you know, the, so as, as, I, as I go through this, so please uh, feel free to interject and, uh, and, and add things to this. And I will invite you to add things to this. So this, is, this is, comes from uh, our work is, uh, you know, we do, um, I'll, I'll tell you about my work, but we, we have a control panel. We, we build a control panel that's like Acquia and Pantheon that runs on, uh, it's like a dashboard that runs on our customer's AWS account. And, and one of the things that, you know, we tell people like it's not for everyone. So, uh, you know, if you have small sites or if you just have one site, then you're probably good with just your Pantheon or Acquia or Platform SH account. If you have a fleet of sites or if you have large sites, then you should consider moving. But there, so there's always pros and cons to it. You know, it's not like we go out there and we say, well, this fits, you know, this solution fits everyone. So, so this was, but we're always learning things as we go through this. So I, I just figured we'll make it a series and it'll be a good thing to put it out there and it'll be good for us to add things to this presentation and for us to learn from folks that are out there. And what we've seen is people have already done this themselves is they've actually taken their sites and moved things off to AWS or to GCP or to Azure, and they have gone through this experience themselves and they've learned a lot through this. So I would like to collect that information as well and for us to share that information amongst us uh, as well. So, so it's not, again, it's not a formal presentation by any means. Um, my, my background, this is, um, this is, this picture is in Vietnam, our team, um, You'll see a couple of folks here, Johnny Chen and An Ho. They're, uh, they're our team members from Vietnam. They're joining us. It's 11 p.m. over there. Um, so this picture was taken in Vietnam. Uh, I was there in, I think, 2019, end of 2019, early 21. And this is, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, there, there's big mountains on the on water and uh, I'll have to ask my wife. Um, so a little background on me. I've been involved with Linux. I've been 
doing Linux training since back since the 90s when uh, I don't know if you guys know the these distribution Idrisil and Slackware and well, Debian is still around and Slackware is still around too. Uh, so so I was messing around with Linux since back then. I, I got involved with uh, Drupal since it was Drupal 4, early 2000s. And uh, I had gotten involved in hosting since actually since late 90s. Uh, as a hobby. And then I started doing it as a business since uh, the mid 2000s. And we started setting up colos and doing VPSs and so on. And then 2008, uh, I think a couple of years after AWS came, came out, uh, we started using it in our business. So using EC2s and S3s for doing hosting. So I've been working with AWS for a long, long time. Uh, well, for a long time, you know, in, in AWS terms. Today, I live in Denver, uh, where in the summer, you'll see sunflowers. And in the winter, you'll see the snow. So we have all four seasons, uh, uh, but it's beautiful. I come from the Bay Area. I, was, uh, I went to school at Berkeley and uh, and uh, Carnegie Mellon and uh, in Pittsburgh and uh, uh, but in in the Silicon Valley uh, arm of that but I uh, we moved here about 10 13 years ago now so uh, but we love it here so uh, uh, and and today um, I'm the CTO of and co-founder of Dev Panel. It's a DevOps control panel, and we're a technology partner with AWS. I, we do a lot of work with Kubernetes. I'm an ambassador with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So I do a lot of talks with them, and I do a lot of uh, uh, meetups. I run a lot of meetups for those guys. Um, and then, OK, so now, why AWS? So. You know, we talk to a lot of people anytime they say, you know, they want to move to the cloud. A lot of times they, they just mean they want to move to AWS, you know. So it's the one of the largest, you know, in the if you look at the Gartner Magic Quadrant, you know, it's the largest player in the cloud. And they have the biggest global infrastructure around. Um, but Microsoft is is close um, on their Azure because they're just going around and buying out all the uh, all the corporate data centers. They have uh, off the cloud services, they have the largest offerings. Um, so they have over 200 products and, and growing. And for each of these products, they have like all these sub products. And, um, you know, when you when you think of AWS, or when you talk to a about AWS, everybody says, you know, it's, it's easy to deploy, it's easy to manage, it's infinitely scalable. And you know it's always secure and it's plug and play, and they have a ton of managed services and it's affordable. But but you know is it is it all true? Like you know, uh, so you have to question these things, right? Like it's 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 not it's not always true. It's not always easy to deploy. It's not always easy to manage. It's only infinitely scalable if you know what you're doing and and it's only secure like most of the leaks happen when things are not configured properly you know uh on aws and a lot of things are not configured properly so um and when you go into aws you'll see you'll see there's you know there's a ton of services there's this is just if you go into services how, how many people have used aws here uh before just by a show of hands. Uh, yeah, okay. So I see one, I see Jed saying, okay, and Scott's used it and Sean's used it. Okay. So um, if you if you haven't used it, it's uh, they, they've got just a ton of services and they get, it can get very complicated very fast, right? So, so, and this is just like, I click, you click on services and this is just page one of three. So this thing just, you, you'll see the scroll bar here. It just keeps scrolling. Um, so, and, and I, I tell people that it, it actually takes a degree, you know, it takes multiple degrees to operate. AWS. It's not easy, right? 
Um, I was going to ask, do you know what all those are? If you went through the list, I I, I do not. Uh, <laughs> no one, guys, no one does. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, our guys do. Uh, we we have uh, folks that have that have gone through the machine learning stuff. Uh, we have folks that have gone through the developer operations, architect, uh, and the DevOps stuff. So this this the gray stuff. We have folks that have gone through it. I certainly have not. And we have folks that have gone through the machine learning stuff and the security stuff, but uh, I yeah. I'm not I'm not the expert on any of this. Oh, you're right. There's so much they all there, there is there is yeah, and and it keeps changing, right? Like it it's you have to keep up with it. Um, and, so, and their, so, their their names don't always make sense. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is uh, it's yeah, it's uh, it, it's very high level stuff, right? Um, so uh, th this is like pros and cons, but so I'll go through the cons first, and and this is where I want your input. Um, so so the risks of running on AWS, uh, so so you know of moving of migrating. So you're hosting somewhere, right? Like if you're hosting on Pantheon or Acquia, what are the risks of moving to AWS? Like what, what can you guys think of? I'm, I'm going to make some notes here. I, I have my own notes that I, I will go through, but, but I just want people, like I want this to be participatory. So what can you guys think of some risks? Well, Acquia is running on AWS. Um, so pre <laughs> presumably uh, uh, one, of the, one of the risks is that um, if you, something happens to your virtual environment at two o'clock in the morning, um, you know, you'll find out about it when you wake up. Um, whereas if something happens at your virtual environment at two o'clock in the morning on a, on a monitor, ho monitor hosting, someone's gonna get a ticket, they'll maybe, maybe restart your production. Um, you'll, you'll find out about it when you, got it up, when you wake up, but it'll probably be restarted. But you, you can do that with AWS also. And, and somewhere you need to have someone around the world who's awake who can get and do that. And if you manage your AWS properly and image what you're doing, you can be back up in a couple of minutes. Right. Well, but, presumably, but, you're, I mean, if 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 Acquia is adding no no value for for their managed hosting, then fine. But presumably, they're adding some value monitoring. When is that customer support too? You know, for for me, it's like. Uh, I believe Acquia is, you know, going to take kind of a white glove action in that moment where with AWS, you know, sure, there's ways to go about it, but there's not going to be an account representative. I'm going to call at 2 a.m. and say, hey, account rep, we're in trouble. We need some help here, you know. Um, so I guess white glove customer support would be the reason for me. Well, you do have that. You do have tech support that you pay for at Amazon that's usually pretty decent. Especially as you, I might not know about that. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd be curious to know more. Starts at a hundred um, a month, and okay. but they're good. Yeah, so so I think I think like what you guys are saying is like AWS will, you can buy managed support from AWS uh, and and AWS, or you can buy managed services from AWS, and AWS will manage your infrastructure, but they might not manage your website, but Acquia will manage your website. Right. So, yeah, so they understand support. the application. Yeah, they, they understand, the application. They understand the application. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. So, so, so that's, yeah. And then they're monitoring it, actively monitoring it and proactively responding to it. Right. Monitoring and proactive response. Right. What, what else is the risk? Well, as you said earlier, you know, sometimes AW is just a little strange the way they do everything. And so if you're not adapted or used to it, you can config easily misconfigure something. You know, there, there are many times, especially if I'm spinning thing up late at night, that I forget to turn on port 80 and I can't get in. And so their firewall, everything's shut by default except for port 22, which is wide open and you gotta close that for yourself. But a lot of the industries, especially as you start meeting more and more things together. So we're, a lot of us are used to having the database on the same server as everything else, you need to have that as a separate location, as a separate RDS instance, as the proper way of doing it on AWS. And just more learning all this stuff, there's more things to learn 
but as you learn it, you make a better system, but you got to be careful. You don't get stuck forever in their environment, especially yeah. if you start adding other things. If you add the Lambda series for some reason, you know, right. for, if, in a pure Drupal world, you would probably, Lambda is a serverless technology. You drop in some code and you access it and you get charged for the process. You're not going to have that in Drupal, but you know, Drupal so far, I've, I've run pretty efficiently and happily on AWS, and it seems to be a little bit faster than I have in, in other servers. Yeah. So, so misconfiguration can can cost like can result in security exposure, and I think cost exposure, right? Like, you can you can create. If you're not configured correctly, then you can get like massive cost or something like that. I've seen that happen. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I've you seen you that are your own. You are. You are the system administrator. Right. 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 Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I. I've hosted Drupal long time ago. Um, on my own, you know, I had a data center. I had, the, you know, that was the that that over there was the Linux server. Was you know that's the web yeah. server. You know yeah. that that box in the rack. And yeah. Um, when you're what even if that box goes into the cloud you're still the system administrator yeah so uh, if you're not prepared to take on those responsibilities that's a con yeah. yeah and aws is big and can be scary right um you know other problems you have is misconfiguring who you give access to either yeah, through access. their their panel or through other other means yeah i'm going to put misconfiguration as a separate. So um, access misconfiguration, right? Through through control panel, uh, panel and programmatic. And, and because you can't actually get to the server yourself, you lose the key. If you lose your, 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 your private key, you know, you can be screwed. There are ways around it. As yeah. a client, as a client who who fired me and didn't bother to go through the due diligence to make sure they can get into everything, and a month later realized they couldn't get back in because they had lost the key because they fired the other person who was my manager <laughs> with the key. They had to come back to you. They're like, "Hey, I, can you help you, us out here?" Yeah, yeah. They, I said, "No. You told me to destroy everything. I did." Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Interesting. The, the, the good part yeah. is the courts are back open so I can go back and get, get the money they owe me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Um, and any other risks you guys can, can think of? I think you have to manage your own billing and, and budgeting kind of stuff. Yeah. I think there's a third party interface that does billing for you now for AWS to bill your clients. But you're uh, right. You you have to watch the billing. Yeah, there's exposure. There's exposure, right, for billing and budgeting, uh, and there's expertise required. I think. But but for AWS, that's a whole different set of skills beyond just admin to go and watch the the cost to make sure if you're making backups, you're purging old ones. You know, to lower right. lower your cost, any of your images. I mean. You get a lot of tools that could be a lot of danger if you don't watch yourself. Right. Um, what What other ones? The, the, For me, the one... it would be. Go ahead. go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Jed. I, I was just going to say workflows. You know, my the developer workflows, the different environments, uh, multi dev, um, the Git integration. You know, when you're working with a team, I find a lot of value in that that comes from Pantheon and Acquia that you, you know, we just recently had a presentation on Ansible, which kind of opened my mind of like how you could do the environments and stuff like that in AWS. But, you know, there's still a lot of integration and thought put behind the workflows in these uh, hosting yeah. as product services. Yeah. What, what, so workflow, say more about the workflow. What, what else? Is, is good about the workflow or what are the things that are that you like about the workflow or what yeah yeah well when within a team like integration into git being able to do like pull requests that helps 
the the automation you can do with like terminus and being able to walk code through like a multi-dev onto dev on the test on a production and then be able to apply that sequence out to like 10 sites um those type of workflows uh you know i think you just have to build all that if you're doing it on aws it's not that well, it's possible no, good. aws you know, has it, their version of that yeah well right i have i don't yeah, know but you have to AWS. build your, yeah i didn't know about the support own, I didn't, right? yeah and, and so i'm here to learn but yeah definitely yeah. I guess these are the reasons why I've chosen to use Pantheons and Aquia. Right. So I think right, that's right, valuable right. in this conversation. Right. But. Right. Okay. This is this is awesome. Um. Okay. Anything else? Any any other big ones that that come to mind? This this is this is really cool. I'm going to share these slides with you guys because this is this is like this is gold. Yeah. So, what else? Uh, again, just trying to the, they have a huge ecosystem that's designed to do everything you could possibly want, but you have to know when to use it, when not to use it. You know, their um, Highway fit, Route 66, I think they call, yeah. is their D DNS server. Is that really what you want to use? Or do you want to keep it where, you know, a DNS made easy or ultra DNS, we have more, more control or your registrar. Yeah, DNS, CDN, WAF. Uh, yeah, there, there's, there's a whole lot of TLAs, right? The three-letter acronyms. Uh, how, how do you use EFS? Uh, I, I'm just going to think of all the, all the fancy names. RDS, their database, uh, S3, Lord Balancer, uh, ECS, right? ALB, so, the simple, application simple load messaging, balancer. Their, their email. I forget was SIS, SNS, or SES. SES for simple which, which email reinforces, service, SNS. Which reinforces Jeb's point, Jeb's point a few moments ago um, that uh, if you want full customization over all of that and all your workflows and you're fine with administering that, um, that gives you a lot of power to make things completely custom for your situation. Right. Um, but uh, we had a client who, uh, you know, most of our clients are on one of the managed hosting um, situations, but I have a client now who self hosts and, uh, the, the amount of difficulty that it takes to get a copy of the, of the database so that I can load something in my local debugger. Um, uh, I mean, that costs hours of time, uh, uh on many, many, many bugs, um, yeah. versus just being able to go to a, go to a, go to the Pantheon dashboard. Um, or use Terminus, or go to the Acquia dashboard, or or use Drush, and and my developer just literally pulls down the database and, and is debugging the bug in in, in ten minutes. So, so the great power. What's that quotation? With great power comes great responsibility. Yes. And, uh, when you just mentioning Lando, that might be another thing to mention is like integrations. Like you can expect third parties like Lando and or to want to integrate into a Pantheon or an Acquia, but like, would you add that nice feature where you're like Lando pool and may, I, I bet you uh, Scott's about to tell me you could do that in AWS. So I believe you, but you know, stuff like that. I don't know. You, you, with AWS, as Sean says, with AWS, you can customize it all, but you have to do it while Pantheon. You have to do it. Yeah. Right. Pantheon has it done for you. So right. uh, so it becomes a really difficult decision, you know, it's the right tool for the right job to figure out who the client is, what their budget is, what, they, what their needs are. I played with Pantheon once or twice. I'm going to go back to it. Last time I had some problems with it a while back. It wasn't as intuitive. I thought it's probably much better than it is. Never used Acquia. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a pain. I mean, I manage, I use um, my SQL workbench to get into my databases at um at Amazon, and that, that works great. And I ban the use. So I'm trying to get away from using PHP in my admin ever again, just because this way it's not there. No one can can get into it. Yeah, um, you know it, it, it's tough, man. It's, you know, yes, if you could build and play with it all yourself, and you really want to be that custom, then AWS is a different thing. Yeah, it's got a lot of power, but but uh, again, the the power comes at a cost, and, yeah. and you have to do it, and you have to support it. 
and 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 then it becomes like how much can you scale uh, if you're doing everything and how much you know and and if you're supporting everything so okay so this this is really good because you guys have covered most of the points that I have written down <laughs> so which is which is great because I'm gonna we're halfway through so but I I can stream through the rest of the slides right. Uh, so, so this, this covers the expertise, right? Like, how do you do it? Uh, I'm gonna go through the slides that I had, the points I had written down. And the question, and these points come from, from us working with other customers and working with other, other developers, okay? So, so this is not something I came up with. This is something that came to us, other customers came to us with, right? So how do you do it? Like, how do you do setup, development, deployment, management? How do you set up clusters, servers, containers, Fargate, ECS, EKS, and so on, right? Um, and, then, and then when you have problems, right? Like you, you guys said, what happens in the middle of the night, right? When there's a problem, where do you go? You know, there's the application and then there's the infrastructure layer, right? Acquia takes care of both. So where do you go, like, if there's a problem, right? Um, then there's the types of support, right? Application support and infrastructure support. Those are the two things and the support hours, right? Um, if you're building it, then you have to support it 24 by seven, right? But, but if Acquia is doing it, then, then I guess you can push some of that support to them, but you have to pay for it. You have to, you can, they'll, they'll support it for you. Uh, expertise, right? Uh, do the setup, implementation, migration, management, support, and all these you know, things like database, file systems, Redis, Memcache, uh, CDN, their CloudFront, WAF, application firewall, the NAT gateway and so on, auto scaling, um, direction, like who gives you, who tells you, and this is, this is keeping up with technology. We talked about that. Uh, who, who tells you like, hey, this is what, this is how, this is how, where you should be going. These are the new technologies coming up. This is what you should be integrating. And then learning it and then implementing those things, right? Um, and then who does, who does your bill review and cost management, right? Set up and configuration, like you talked about, Jed, the, the workflow, right? The dev test live environment, um, you know, and it's mostly, you know, Scott, like you were saying, it's mostly customized command line utilities. These are things you are writing, right? And there's no standardized point and click UI. Um, yeah, except on light sale. Right, on light sale. But, but light sale is not, we, we experimented with light sale. We didn't find it robust enough. Nah. So, and team development, this is Jed, this comes back to what you were saying is, you know, an access management. This is exactly the things you were saying, right? So IAM, like, and, and Scott, you mentioned this is, you know, it's not, and, and it's not at the right level. IAM can, can do access management for the AWS level, right? But not at the website level. No. And you need both. You need both. You need to be able to control environment level and the AWS infrastructure level, right? And SSH key management is generally a nightmare. Right, like like you were saying, <laughs> Scott. Like they give you SSH keys, then they forget about it, and then you know you still they fire somebody or they let somebody go, and then they still have their keys on their infrastructure. Like you know, it's like so. And, and re removing keys, yeah, it's is, crazy. Is, is zero it's to, to, to the you have to get shell into the server and remove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a nightmare. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. And there's no single sign-on, no easy single sign-on solution available. Um, there, there's cost and performance optimization. We talked about that, right? So, okay, now the pros, right? So, so the pros, if you do this right, okay, and we've done this, right? And, and I'll give you an example. This is, this is a government agency that was, that was, it, is anybody here with Acquia? Do they work for Acquia? I, I don't I don't want to like I don't want to say anything bad about Acquia. They they provide great service. I know it, right? Um, and and I have to tell you, like you know, you get what you pay for. Okay, so you you pay a lot with Acquia and you get a lot. Okay, so I don't I'm not putting anyone down. 
I'm not doing, I'm not putting anyone down, okay? But I just have to tell you like the cost savings that we were able to calculate for one of the agencies, right? They were doing four sites with Acquia and they were paying them close to a million dollars a year for four sites. And they wanted to move up to 47 sites, right? And they were like, there's no way we could afford that. Right? Because if you calculate that out, it'd be close to like, you know, it'd be a lot of money. Even with discounts, it'd be a lot of money. So, so we helped them go to, we helped them set up the whole thing. They're still locked into contracts, by the way. But we helped them calculate their, their stuff on AWS. And they'd be able to run all their 47 sites on AWS for $250,000, right, annually. And their sites get, their sites get, Three billion hits per month. Okay, and and we were able to optimize it so they were they were faster than Acquia, right? So 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 better performance and and much cheaper in cost, right? So so the cost savings itself are huge, but you have to do it right, right? Otherwise otherwise this thing just it just falls apart, right? Now the, the, to do an estimation. Is it, and while it's lower, that's another skill that you need. Right. <laughs> so not, not just estimation. You have to do load testing. Yep. You know? And when you're doing load testing and when somebody is getting 3 billion hits per month, that type of load testing is, is, is crazy. Right? Just, to do, just to set up load testing for that is, is crazy. Like, it took us a few days to set up load testing for doing that, right? Now, now so, does that site, do, do those services expand and contract with the hours? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's auto scaling. So at night, but, but the thing is, right, their operations is around the world. So when this shrinks down on the US side, it shrinks on the other side of the, it expands on the other side of the world, right? So, so, but they have servers around the world. So their operations go up and down, but they go up and down across the world. Um, and we had to do load testing like that from, from across the world, right? Is this on the Go Cloud? I'm sorry? Is this on the Go Cloud? Uh, it cloud? Is, no, it is not under Gov Cloud. Uh, it, was, it was on their public cloud. But we had the option of putting it on Gov Cloud. Uh, the testing we did was not under Gov Cloud, it was on public cloud. Uh, but the government side? Yes, it is on the government side, yeah. Uh, it's a government agency, but we did not do testing on the Gov Cloud because it was too much bureaucracy. We just did it on the public cloud. So, is this analytics available somewhere to walk, to see? Yeah. Uh, if you contact me on the side, then I can connect you with the agency, and they can share it with you. Um, I can only share so much, but they are they've shared it with other folks. So they're happy to share people, uh, stuff with other people. Understand, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't even officially disclose their name because like I haven't said their name yet. So, but I can connect you with them. I can give them, I can give them your information and then, and then you and them can talk if they want to talk with you. And then that's up to them. One of the points you make on decreasing over cost decreases if you engage Amazon, they will work with you to lower your cost. Yes, and, and that was the other thing that the government already has contracts with Amazon. So they got like a 20% discount across all Amazon services, right? So not only, not only did they get like the Amazon cost, like, you know, I mean, think about it. Like, you know, uh, Acquia, for example, runs on top of Amazon, so they get you know, their cost structure is based on Amazon plus, you know, they get their profit and stuff, right? Um, but, but if you go, if you're a big customer with Amazon, then you get a discount off of Amazon's list price. So, so, so that's, that's another thing. And Amazon keeps decreasing their price every year. Unlike other, you know, other providers keep increasing their price. Hosting providers keep increasing their price. Amazon keeps decreasing their price. So that's the other pro, I think. This is another pro, which is big for, which is good for bigger companies. It's access, ownership, and isolation, 
right? There's there's zero lock-in. You own your code, you own your infrastructure, right? So, so and you have root access to all your, your infrastructure. It can be fully customized. Scott, like you were, I think you were saying, right? Um, it can be fully customized, it can be highly optimized, and it's easy to integrate with all the different pieces that AWS offers. And they offer like a ton of stuff, but you know, it's easy to integrate with them. So that's a, that's a big pro for a lot of our customers. They also, they also have thousands of AMIs and you can choose what flavor of Linux you want to use. Yes. I don't, I don't know if you get that. I don't think you get that on Acquia or Pantheon. No, no. And, and they have a lot of pre-built solutions. They call them quick starts. Yeah. So they're WAF solution. Like people buy Security WAF and they pay thousands of dollars for Security WAF, you know, per site, per year. Uh, but if you get them from Amazon, they have a pre-built solution you can launch and you pay like you pay you pay less than hundred dollars per site uh, per year. So so it's 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 an awesome and, and it's managed like Amazon manages all the rules uh, for the WAF. The WAF is a web application firewall. Um, so so it's 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 good service. Um, Okay, um, let me go to the next one. Flexibility, it's open architecture. Like I was saying, managed WAF, CDN, Memcache, Redis. These are all managed services by Amazon. And the nice thing about the managed services is like you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night to, to take care of it. Amazon takes care of that infrastructure. Your Memcache will not go down. Your database, if you get their serverless database, it expands and shrinks automatically. They add CPU when needed. They add storage when needed. Uh, they, they add, you know, they expand the cluster of the database and they shrink the cluster of the database when needed, right? You don't have to take care of that database. That database will not go down, right? And, and, and that memcache will not go down. That Redis or that CDN will not go down. So, so those are all managed services that Amazon offers. You pay a little bit extra for that, right? But it's still cheaper than, than hosting it, the hosting the whole And, and the, the DB gets backed up whenever you want and on a regular basis, and you can download that, that database with ease. Yeah, the, the Amazon RDS, the nice thing about RDS, I think it's, you can buy this, you can set up this backup like that, that you can, you can go back to any one minute increment or something like that for the last 30 days. You can get a snapshot automatically. Uh, so they have they have stupid things like that, um, and they have recipes for doing load testing. They have a quick start that does that automatically fires up. You can fire up a thousand Fargate containers across the world, and they'll hit your site for doing load testing. Right? Um, one of our customers uses Alexa integration. Uh, they have log analytics. Uh, they have one of our clients uses AI ML services. Um, for doing uh, analytics against their logs. So they have a lot of services right out of the box that you can use. Um, so yeah, for AI ML, they have this thing called Open Distro that you can run against your logs. It's like the Elk stack and it'll analyze your logs and it'll alert you like when there's anomalies. Um, and the nice, other nice thing is they have a whole certified pool of resources that you can hire across the world, right? Um, so, so like our team is based out of Vietnam, like our development, most of our developers are out of Vietnam, our, our hardcore developers. So, you know, we have folks in Vietnam, we have folks in Russia and uh, Australia and Brazil. So it's like, you can have a distributed team. So why aren't people doing it? You know, there's the risks like we talked about there or the perceived risk. There is the unknown unknowns, right? The, and then there's unknown consequences for those unknown things, right? Uh, but there's also unknown rewards, right? Like people know that, yeah, they can benefit from it, but uh, you know, how much will they benefit, right? Uh, there's human and technical resources. Like you don't, if you're not familiar with it, like, will you do it? Uh, that, that's a risk. Right. And, and, you know, you don't know what can go wrong, right? Like it's, it's a big project to take on. And, uh, and, 
you know you don't know if it, it will be a success you know if you know if it'll be a success then then it'll, it's easy to take it take it on you know and site migration is not you know it's not easy so sometimes it's just easier and safer to just stay where you are you know so it's just the known evil right um then the resources, it's uh, it's lack of knowledge and expertise. And these are things we hear. I, I left blank bullets. Like if you guys have inputs, then then speak up, right? Um, it's it's lack of knowledge and expertise. Uh, you know, it would, for companies, it would take too long to build up the expertise. It might cost a lot to retool and retrain. Uh, cost are unknown, cost of migration are unknown. The cost might be too high, who knows? Right, how to do it, uh, not knowing where to start, the do's and don'ts, right? What is the path to success, right? And, and what is the path to failure? Like, you don't know either one, right? Uh, and what's the easiest way to do it? So, and then what are their tools? Nobody's giving you the tools, right? Like nobody's got a book to say, this is how you do it, right? Or nobody's got like a guide to say, here's the, here's the guide to eliminate your risks, right? So, so I, I put together some things for you guys and, uh, and uh, you can benefit from this when we share the slides. So AWS gives you a ton of resources, okay? Uh, most of these are open source. Actually, all of these are open source, uh, but you know, when you put your stuff into AWS, then you're, you're in the AWS ecosystem. Um, so if you go here, for example, this shows you how to launch a Drupal instance on Amazon LightSail, like you were talking about, Scott. Um, it is good for small websites, okay? And LightSail, I'll tell you, you can start a server, you can actually host a Drupal website on $3.50 a month, okay? But again, you can't, uh, like we said, you know, you, you get what you pay for, so you can't expect much from that. It's, it's great for small sites, right? What is LightSail? It's just it's like a package VPS. services? Yeah, it's like, a, yeah it's like DigitalOcean. So this is their service to compete with DigitalOcean. Thanks, right? yeah, got you. Yeah, um, I have a five dollar drop myself on digital on DigitalOcean. Um, yeah, so this is this small, is a small a small Ubuntu web server that serves some static. I put my talks up there when I do a talk. Yeah, my slides. Go yeah, over. yeah. So this is this is exactly like DigitalOcean type of stuff, and they make it like one click for Drupal setup and for WordPress setup. So so it's great when people come to me and they say, "Hey, we need a Drupal website," and I'm like, "Okay, you know." friends and family plan is, you know, you go to light sale, right? Like go set it up there because it's the cheapest thing. And, you know, you're not going to bother me. You can just like do it over there. Um, ECS is, is the next tier up. So, so this is your deployment guide. Um, they say it'll take you half an hour. It takes you longer. Okay. Uh, so, but this is the infrastructure. They, they give you the template. Uh, this is the infrastructure that they set up for you. And, and it's on an auto scaling group. It's on multi in multi zone, right? Availability zone, multi AZ. Uh, it uses EFS, uh, it uses Aurora, it uses Elasticash, Memcache, right? So it uses CDN, Route 53, and so on, right? So, and then everything, everything is automated. You just connect your account and you launch it and everything is automated. So, so you can check this out. Um, and it, it goes through the whole thing. Uh, it can cost anywhere, you know, like close to $100 a month or so to run a site, but it, it will be auto scaling. Right, uh, and you can get multiple instances. Yeah, question, Jed? Yeah, I guess, is this going to, if you went further, if you wanted to do this, is this a guide on how to do it with all the services? Or are you saying you actually like click a button and it's gonna do everything we just see in that diagram? 
you can click it, it's you can click a few buttons and it'll do it it'll ask you a bunch of questions and it's got a few forms and it'll it'll do it for you can you go the other way is there you follow is, i guess you're on your own then there's no tutorial part to this this is a service um there, there is like there's documentation on it okay that's so awesome yeah, a, this is great. yeah 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 it's it's pretty robust so 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 go through this and and uh, read the documentation. There's there's good documentation on this, uh, but but again, you're you you are on your own after you set this up, right? The, the other thing you can do is go spin up an EC2 and choose an AMI that has the Drupal that you want. Yeah, um, I I don't have that in here, but I will contact you after this, Scott, because I think it'll be good for us to have that in here. Okay. Um, EKS, there's different way. EKS is their Kubernetes service, okay? So I put down a few ways to do it, but I'm gonna show you the their simplest version of doing it. This is their, their GitLab. The, the first two, they overcomplicate it. They say, this is your, you take this quick start and then you put it in the EKS infrastructure. So they give you, they give you this, you know, they tell you, they say six minutes, right? Oh, this is the time to read. The time to do is like, I think it'll take you over a day. Because they say like fork and clone the repository, then you have to customize it, then you have to add the sub modules, then you have to customize it, then you have to deploy it, and then you have to run task, it's, it's too complicated. So the easiest way is that third one that I put down here. And if you follow this, then it puts it on Amazon EKS, which is their Kubernetes service, okay? So if you wanna do it by hand, you do it like that. And this is their newest thing. And look when this is published, okay? Well, like 10 minutes ago? <laughs> yeah, like pretty much 10, 10 minutes ago, right? Like within the last, what, within the last few weeks. So this is serverless Drupal application on Fargate and EFS. Wow. Okay. This is serverless Drupal. I, we went through this and this is good stuff. Okay. So they give you the architecture for this and, and this, is, this is solid. Okay. So if you want serverless Drupal, this is the way to set it up. And this auto scales. Okay. So, so this is the way to do it. Okay. Now, okay, now having said that, okay, there's open source tools. Uh, Scott, I will contact you. I didn't find any good open source tools, but we as a company, DevPanel, uh, our company is developing a bunch of open source tools. Okay, So I'll show you the tools that we have developed. And we are in the, in the middle of developing a community edition of our tools. And our community edition is in beta. So if you guys want to try this out, then contact me and I'll be happy to set you up with it. Okay. Um, but I will show you some of the tools that we have for doing importing, for developing, deploying, managing, and scaling sites. Uh, these are our tools. Again, they're, they're free to use in the community edition. Uh, they work, our tools work on your AWS account. They don't work on our, so we're not, we don't do hosting. Okay. We just give you like a control panel, like a C panel, right? It, it works on your servers, on your AWS account. Um, and we create clusters. And, and the next thing we will do is create serverless environments in your account, right? And we give you quick starts for creating templates and things like that. So that's, that's DevPanel. You can go to devpanel.com. And we use things like Ansible, CloudFormation, Helm, Terraform, Kubernetes. These are all the things that we use on the back end. And when you get an account with DevPanel, you get a control panel like this, right? You can set up your workspaces. You can invite people to come into the workspaces and work with you. And when you start a workspace, you can select what do you want to set up, Drupal 7, Drupal 8, Drupal 9, WordPress, Magento, or a basic LAMP application. You can create your own application. You can connect to your GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab account. Um, and then when you create your workspace, 
or when you create your application, you get a link to your application, you get PHP My Admin, you get VS Code in a browser, you get Code Server in a browser, so you can do all your development right in a browser. Uh, you get your database and files, you can do your backups, you can look at your logs, you can set up your security. Um, we set up auto scaling in your AWS account. And when we set up auto scaling, we use on demand and spot instances. So we save yeah. your cost, right? And we give you, we give you, uh, this is VS code in a browser. So, and we install pre-installed Composer and Drush for you. So I'll take you through one of the quick starts. Uh, are you guys familiar with open wide distribution or open social or CVCRM or the feeds migrate module or anything like that? You guys want to see any of this? Civi, so, so uh, You want to see CVCRM? Got about three, about three minutes, Salim. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you one of these. Okay, so this is CVCRM Quick Start, and this goes and builds out the CVCRM Quick Start. And while this is building out, so this is running Terraform and things like that, I'm gonna go back and see uh, in my demo workspace, I'm gonna see if there's any other applications that are running. Okay, there's the open Y that's already running. So let me go to the open Y and show you what's running. So here's the open Y that's already, that was built earlier today. So it was done using a quick start. And then, and then here's the PHP my admin that came with it. So when you build it out, this is what you get. So you get your PHP my admin, and then you get your VS Code. And this VS Code. This VS code comes with a terminal, right? So, and you notice that we entered this, this is all single sign-on. So there's no, there's no keys or anything that you have to maintain. And then, and then this comes with composer built in. And then if in this VS code, I'm in the index.php, if I, if I go in here and I type in PHP info and die, right? If I and this is like live coding here. So if I type this in and I go in here and I refresh the site, this is my PHP info. And if I comment this out and I go back to the site and I'm not committing this code back to Git. This is, this is I'm, I'm programming this live and I'm seeing my changes live here in the website. And then I can actually go in here in the branches and I can see all my branches here. So if I go into my repo, I only have one branch, but if I create, if I create additional branches here, right? If I create like a develop branch or something like that, then I would see more branches here. And then I can create, I can instantiate those branches. So if you guys wanna try this out, then when you get this, uh, the, the thing that I have to tell you is that you're not going to own this repo, so you can't create more branches. But if you fork this repo, and then you can go into your, into your demo workspace and then just create a new project, and then you can come down here and you can say use an existing repo and use your own fork. And then... And then if you fork that quick start repo, use that fork, then you can create additional branches and see how that works. Um, so you exhausted a really lively discussion today. Yeah, um, I'm so done. It was, it, yeah, it was really cool to really see impressive. all the participation. Right. Um, this is one of the, the liveliest discussions we've had at uh, oh, I'm glad. So uh, yeah, no, uh, awesome job sparking a discussion. Um, uh, 
I, yes, thank you. We, we tried was it. We, we, fantastic. Yeah, it was. There's we, one thing I want to add on, on AWS support. If you're yeah. in New York City and there's no pandemic, you can actually get live as you can reach out and touch the person support at the loft. Oh, I didn't know that. How cool. Yeah. So downtown in Manhattan, there's the AWS loft workspace. And when that was open pre-pandemic, it'll be open again. You can go down and actually speak to a person in front of you. And that that is cool. It's like the Apple store for AWS. Yes. And the great part is four times went down with problems while we're trying to figure out someone overheard us and came up with a solution. You had a whole bunch of people working on solutions for you, you know, as part of the community. That is cool. Yeah. That and they give cool. you cookies and coffee. That is awesome. So so we really aim to end our lunch and learns um, uh, promptly so people are planning their lunch hours. Um, so let me say that our upcoming events um, in, in the New York community, um, uh, JD is hosting an in-person Drupal NYC meetup walk and talk in place of our online, you know, our online meetup slot for August. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure I saw JD on the, uh, uh, here, I was throwing up celebrations. Anything you want to add JD? Uh, no, no, it'll be fun. We'll uh, we'll go for a walk uh, around Lower Manhattan and um, uh, see the sites, uh, chat informally, and uh, see see where the night takes us. Great. Um, yeah. Then the, the lunch and learn, uh, or the next the, the next thing after that will be meet up again September first. We're taking an August break um, um, from from lunch and learn. Um, and then uh, we'll come back with Lunch and Learn on Tuesday, September 15th. Um, we're also asked to mention um, that uh, uh, the Drupal Association is trying something out. Um, uh, they're, they're gonna host a contribution mentor summit next month. Um, uh, there's a link, it's, there's a lot of links on the community events page, but there's a link on that page. You can go scroll around um, uh, uh, that page and find it. Um, but the purpose of this summit is to uh, teach people how to mentor other people um, at contribution events to try to increase and make it easier for people to contribute to Drupal. And it's 1258. Um, so uh, anything else uh, anybody wants to share or any remaining questions in the two minutes that we have left? I have one quick thing is that I would like to send out a quick survey to see how I can, one, how I can improve uh, this presentation or this talk, and then two, if people would like to see the following talks on this, the other items in the series, then put in your email address, and then I will keep you informed. Definitely. Yeah, please post that in. Thank please you. Post that in the meeting. All right. All right, everyone. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to be have with all of you for lunch. Yeah, I have yeah. screaming, screaming for her lunch. Someone's a dog that was woofing before. This one says meow. And thank you for the participation. I didn't know how that would go, but uh, the, it went really great. So thank you for, right. for all jumping in. So you got it. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.